walking along here to show you a flowering Australian plant. I looked to my left and to my astonishment, I saw what looked like a bird about to take off. Ha ha. Well, coming round, um, you can see what I mean. This is an arum lily from uh, China called Aracema tortuosum. It really does look just like a sort of a bit of crane, those lovely birds in Chinese paintings. Extraordinary, isn't it? Well, leaving the Aracema bird, here is um, another plant I want to show you. It's uh, a begonia, herbaceous begonia. The unfortunate thing is that the flowers are often hidden in under the leaves, which are quite bold and palmate, hence its name, Begonia palmata. Attractive, herbaceous, totally disappears in the winter. Here they are in close up. Coming up to the uh, Round Temple, there's the weeping Tasmanian conifer, Legorostrobus franklini. Here are the pollen bearing parts of this weeping Tasmanian conifer. This very slow growing and long lived conifer was named after Sir John Franklin, who was an Arctic explorer and governor of Tasmania around 1840 who then died in his third Arctic expedition with the rest of the crew as they got stuck in the ice in the Northwest Passage. And above it is the Australian shrub, Lomartia fraseri, which is in full flower. And the flowers are scented, unfortunately, way up. At least this one is within reach. and at nose level. Now next to this uh, weeping Tasmanian conifer and the Lomartia, we find a white beam, Sorbus, which has large brown fruits. And we'll come up closer to it. And here you can see them. All up the tree. I've seen them described as large as quail's eggs. Uh, I think perhaps this is not a very large quail, but still, they are very dramatic. And it's appropriately called Sorbus megalocarpa, the large seeded Sorbus. Now, of course, guarded by Pan, as are quite a few things behind him, is this extremely large bush of hydrangea, Tokyo Delight. It's been here many years, and it must be a good 12 feet across in both directions. But what a beauty. Puts me in mind of a night out in Tokyo with a geisha. Not that I've ever done that. Still there we go. Coming past Tokyo Delight is one of my favorite white hydrangeas, which is called Madame Moulière, an old variety. But the lovely thing about it is, is her blue eyes. 
Of course, they're blue because she's growing in a acid soil. But still. Edging past Madame Moulier and contrasting nicely with her is this glorious German hybrid hydrangea by the great German hybridist Teller. This is called Rochwanz or Red Start. A wonderful deep wine, sterile flowers with a central boss of fantastic extruded stamens from blue petals. A really stunning combination. Coming out and looking back, you see this white and deep wine red. Here's another delightful dwarf, herbaceous begonia. This one hails from Tanzania and uh, South Africa. Uh, it's extraordinary that it should be almost hardy and certainly is hardy here. It apparently drips down from rocks in shady places which are quite damp. So this rather damp, ferny, leaf mouldy area does seem to suit it. In the same ferny leaf mouldy area as the Begonia Sutherlandi, I'll show you this rather unusual fern. This I collected in Sichuan, southwest China. It was sitting on top of a rock and uh, with a stream around the rock. And I thought to start with it was a rhododendron. Stupid really, but all I could see was the indumentum or the rusty color under the leaf. Anyway, brought it home and this turns out to be a quite an unusual fern, Pyrosia. Shirai, it's called. And here it is, um, 16, 17 years later, I've moved it about a bit to keep it happy. And in the distance, you see this weird and wonderful yellow flowered mounded shrub with sub shrub with nice glossy leaves. And this one is called Lysimachia paradiformis. I don't know, they get these names from somewhere. But it certainly lights up that corner. Next in the tour of unusuals, here is a beautiful glossy foliaged tree. It's one of the persimmons. I think this is called Diospyros lotus. And under the leaves you can see the flowers, which are rather jolly, but small red pitcher shaped things. Here's a closer look. And the bee is taking a closer look as well. When somebody says verbena, I always think of these herbaceous verbenas like Verbena bonariensis, but there are lots of shrubs in the verbena family. Well, here's one with lovely glossy evergreen foliage, even though the flowers aren't much to write home about, little tiny things. Now this one goes by the name of Scytherozylum spicatum. 
or fiddle wood. And the scither bit is in fact what it sounds like, named after the the Greek for a lyre or a musical instrument, because the wood from some of these fiddle woods was used to make the soundboards of uh, musical instruments. A satisfying evergreen, even though it's a bit on the tender side. And here we have another much better known deciduous verbena. Verbena with the most fabulous scented leaves of lemon, which you can use as a tisane. Again, these little lavender white flowers. But you can't resist just rubbing a leaf as you go past and this intense lemon scent. Next to the verbena, we have a thug from Chile called Sestrum Parki, which we saw actually growing in some damp ditches in Chile when we were there years ago. It suckers everywhere and can be quite a nuisance. In marked contrast to the delicious lemon scent of the verbena leaves, the sestrum has rather nasty smelling leaves, a sort of smell of burnt rubber. The only compensation is that on a warm summer's evening, after about 10 o'clock at night, the flowers emit a very sweet scent in complete contrast to the leaves, which are horribly pungent. So some compensation, I suppose. More scents to arrest you in your tracks. And this is from a myrtle from Chile and Argentina, which is called Temu divaricatum or even more incomprehensibly, Blepharocalyx Cruikshankii. There we are. Put that in your pipe. It's crowded out with these incredibly scented, heavily scented flowers in every single part of the shrub or tree, really, because it's a, it's a good 10 feet tall now. Like many of the myrtles, it has a rather attractive trunk. Coming up the path towards the Agapanthuses and resting on the olive tree, I see a charming, delicate buddleia, which suckers away, it comes from China, and it's got this lovely, deep colored throat. Buddleia Lindleyana, this one's called. Gorgeous and delicate, but needs to be looked at close up. I see this lovely uh, hydrangea flowering, which I met in the uh, Wollong Panda Nature Reserve in the mountains of Sichuan in uh, Western China. I saw plenty of hydrangeas, but I didn't see any pandas. <laughs> and that is uh, where I collected this. It's a uh, hydrangea aspera, which is a large family of hydrangeas, large growing hydrangeas, which come in different varieties. And this one is called strigosa. Strigosa meaning hairy under the leaves. <laughs>